everyone, welcome to Morning Matcha. I'm here today with flower remedy practitioner and homeopath, Alexis Smart. Hi, Hi. Alexis. Hi. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to get yeah. the download on flower remedies. Yeah. Are you familiar with them or have you tried them? Before? I have. So I, I've i actually tried yours a while ago. I mm-hmm. don't remember which one I have, but before that, I got it from Mercado. Did mm-hmm. you used to sell at Mercado or do you still? Um, maybe, I don't think so. Oh, really? Okay. I, maybe I maybe I did. Maybe someone I gave it to so. me. I yeah. have it in my cupboard, though, oh. from you. But my experience with it was like I was telling you earlier in yeah. college, I someone told me about rescue remedy and it was just such a great thing because I would get so stressed out over exams yeah. and um, at the time, I my boyfriend and I had broken up, and I was like hyperventilating, and I cannot tell you how much it. I was blown away by how much it helped me, Isn't and it was incredible? the Bach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I use the Bach remedies in my formulas, but um, a lot of people don't know that Doctor Bach he invented the rescue remedy, but he had thirty eight essences totally wow um for and each remedy is for a different emotional condition or a type of person so, so you studied his uh different like essences exactly oh cool yeah and then I saw people privately for years and made them custom formulas and then I realized um there was a need for these formulas to be out available to the public because they're for kind of universal conditions like heartbreak and lack of confidence and you know which ones are well? Okay, if, let's get started okay. with how you even got into flower essences. Uh, and- well, as many healers do or did, um, I was unwell and I was looking for solutions, and I tried a lot of things, and I had panic attacks. Um, they weren't like full- how old were you? Probably twenty-seven. Mm-hmm. Um, I was an actress. I was doing commercials and modeling a bit, and. Um, I was fine at home, but as soon as I got outside of my house or behind the wheel of a car, I would just like white knuckle it and wow, and like sweating and you know, thinking just like just let me get there. And did um, you know what it was? No, or, yeah. I mean, and like it, it happened gradually, so it was like I didn't really recognize how bad it was. And then um, one day I was like, "This is a problem," and I never took medications or anything like that and Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go down that route so I was passing by a place that said English flower remedies in the window and I (gasps) just read about them and I walked in off the street and I just happened to meet a practitioner who was restocking her kit wow and I told her and she made me a formula and she said um in in three days you're going to feel a lot better and in three weeks you're going to be a whole new person (gasps) and for some reason I believed her because I had so many doubts at that point. I tried a lot of uh, different modalities and stuff. And um, and it was exactly as she said, just like in three weeks, I was completely better. that fast? Yes. And what's funny is when I look back, because now I know what she gave me. I'm, at the time, I just took, took it. it and, yeah. Um, the, she didn't give me anything for fear. So she... She gave me remedies for trusting my intuition and confidence. And what it taught me was that um, the reason I was having panic was that I was ignoring my intuition and I was going against my inner knowing. I was in the wrong agency. I was with the wrong boyfriend. And and my body was trying to say, you're not happy. Yeah. But I wasn't reading it. So after I took that formula, I had this real clarity, like, I have to leave this agent in the sky and... And when and I did, and I felt great, <laughs> and my panic went away. So it's just interesting, you know, um, what we think of as a negative state in our being is often um, to help us, to alert us to the that something's wrong, not something to suppress, you know. Yeah. Did you grow up in the city, or what I was did. your? Um, I I was born in Toronto, Canada, and um, we lived in Mexico for a year when I was a kid. Um, I had rather bohemian parents and uh like we lived in a volkswagen van and drove Fun. around and, and then we moved to la when i was five and i grew up in west hollywood and um silver lake my mom was oh. an early mover to silver lake and wow. echo park um when it was just some old communists and artists and 
And um, so there it was that more nature there. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of those little streets in Echo Park are kind of wild. And yeah. little ca- we, she lived in a little cabin on down a footpath in the hills. And um, so I grew up here. And like, did you feel connected with like plants then or? I did, but um, did I mean, when later? I was little, I used to make, I mean, I was making flower remedies. They're made by um, floating a, a flower in a bowl of spring water in a crystal bowl in the sun and then the water becomes kind of imprinted with the healing energy of the wow. plant and I was doing that when I was like six or seven I was taking flowers and I'm making flower water and I would drink it and I just had no idea what I was doing but I was already doing that that's incredible yeah. what would you do you remember what you would make no I mean I just pulled out some flowers from our garden some little clovers or something mm-hmm. and Wow. So, so how long does it stay in the bowl? Um, usually about three hours. And and I don't make those essences. I get those from England because um, they are grown in the English countryside. They're wild and um, they're made on site there. So That's this company I use is great and they do everything right and the flowers grow there. Yeah. <laughs> I'll leave that to them. And is that the Bach ones or are they just anyone can I use a company called healing herbs so mm-hmm. technically they're Bach flower remedies because mm-hmm. Bach discovered these 38 but uh, they're called healing herbs and they're actually more in line with um, Bach's preparation methods than the other companies so even though they're not called Bach they're more of um, in in the direct lineage of Dr. Bach what other ones are there? Can you tell us a little bit about what exactly they are? I I will. Well, should I tell you the history? Or, yeah, I'd love that. Um, so Dr. Bach was an English physician in the 30s um, who believed that um, all illness originates in the spirit or in the emotions. If And someone has a trauma or if they have a lot of fear or depression that eventually those things will manifest in the body. So he thought if he could find a system of healing that would address a person's emotions, then they wouldn't get sick. Yeah. Um, And he felt like his patients were just being cured physically, but they'd still be depressed or hopeless. And he thought that's not a a complete cure. Um, So he, he left, he was a famous, um, pioneer in vaccines and he was like kind of a entrepreneur not an entrepreneur but um he wasn't just a family physician he was he was a, a researcher and stuff so what about vaccines well he found um the and uh, not the vaccines of our day but yeah he found what's uh, they're called the seven nozodes and he um it's a long thing but he found that certain people who had chronic conditions had an overgrowth of a certain bacteria and he would inject them with their own, like with, with a certain bacteria and they'd get better. Wow. And he could, and this is what started his thinking like, oh, there's personality types and they need specific remedies that someone could walk through a door and he could already tell which bacteria was out of balance just because he'd observed so many people with arthritis and all these chronic conditions and seen which bacteria was off. Um, so, you know, it's funny cause that's what everybody knows about gut bacteria now. And we're all mm-hmm. talking about the, the gut and brain connection. And, um, he was doing that long before anyone talked about it. So, um, so, um, so he just, he went out to the country and, um, started working with flowers. He thought flowers contained the the healing part of the plant um, for the emotions. Mm -hmm. And he tried these essences on different patients and um, saw which ones worked. And um, Why 38? That's how many he thought that were needed. Um, He started originally with 12 because he first, before he found the remedies, he observed people and he concluded that there are 12 types of people. So he made 12 remedies. Um, He found 12 remedies and, they're all for a different personality type and and they're called type remedies in the, in the system. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like, um, the remedy you may recognize as what you've needed since you were little. Mm -hmm. Like I've always been shy or I've always been impatient or, Mm -hmm. um, 
And then the other, he found that people are really complicated and sometimes their true nature is hidden um, under layers of, from trauma or life circumstances. And so he found these other remedies for those conditions. And so often when I make someone a formula, I'll, I'll have their type remedy in there and then I'll have a remedy for something, some challenge that's going on in their lives and um, stuff to remove past, and, you know, wounds, traumas and or sad memories, and they all go in one. Wow. So you make special ones for people as yes. well? Yeah. So I have the product line, but then I also see people one-on-one. -on -one and So um, within three weeks, the feeling that you had went away, and then what happened? You were... I became obsessed with thought yeah. remedies. <laughs> and um, at first it was just fun, and I, I, I love exploring and delving into things and learning when I'm interested in something mm -hmm. I, I get a little obsessive yeah and I did about flower remedies and I just wanted to learn everything and I I had a mentor who taught me and I started seeing friends and family and just I said um you know just let me experiment on you I'll treat you for free and just give me feedback and I, yeah. re I read everything I could and listened to recordings of old dead practitioners and wow but it was these, I, for about five years, I just treated people like this. I sit in my mm -hmm. living room and, um, and got feedback and I found, you know, which, which things really worked and which, you know, someone might look like a certain remedy on paper, but that remedy wouldn't work for them. And I'd try others. So I had a lot of experience, like clinically, I guess you could call it. Mm -hmm. So why, um, when you found your men, you said you found a mentor, was it the same person? No, she was the woman that owned that store. Oh, it was. And um, and the store is he called Healing Waters, and it's right around the corner from Beverly Hills Juice Club. Cool. You, I, that's it's so weird. I kind of imagined it being around there. Yeah, I know. Well, I'd Maybe passed this seen. place since I was little because I grew up in that neighborhood, and I thought it was a spa or something, and 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 it was always closed, and <laughs> um, I thought it was some kind of Swedish day spa, <laughs> and then, but. The night before I went there, I had read an article about a model, funnily enough, that, who was cured for, um, with flower remedies of, you know, a lot of different illness and anxiety. And so it was fresh in my mind. And then I walked by and saw the sign and walked in. And um, so the owner of that store, Jennifer, um, we, I used to kind of bring cases to her and say, this is what's happening. And I gave them this. What do you think? And, you know, we'd, we'd talk about it. Oh. Yeah. And so at the time were you are you still modeling and No. Yeah. But no. at the time you were did it, did it help you with your career? It did. Well, I have terrible stage fright and um and I'm kind of a homebody introvert. I'm not I I'm not a performer by nature and I fell into modeling like when I was 15 and um it was good money and somehow I could do commercials cuz they were just short. Mm -hmm. And I could, most of it wasn't speaking, mm -hmm. which was great for me because <laughs> I could do a funny reaction look and just one, one second. And, um, but I didn't want to go further and be in films or anything. And a few times that I did audition for films, it was just like full on leave my body panic attack. Wow. And I thought, this is not the career for me. Yeah. Your <laughs> and, body's like telling you. Yeah. So, but I kept doing commercials, but the, the flower remedies kind of took over my life and, um, and I became more and more disenchanted with this, having to drive to auditions and people can tell, you know, every, they pick up. And so I wasn't getting as much work. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, I really want to do this for my life, this flower remedy thing. But, but I thought, but you know, there isn't a job flower remedy person or, mm -hmm. um, and I took wild out, which is a remedy for connecting you with your purpose in life. Wow. And, and three days later I, I quit. Um, I just left my agency and I decided to pursue this full time. And it was, I couldn't uh, deny it any longer. Does so, it work more on some people than others? Um, no, I mean, it's not like you have to believe that they were, yeah. but you do have to take them. Yeah. <laughs> so because they take some time to, to work. I mean, in my case, the wild out was very fast, but because they take three weeks, um, you have to believe enough that they will work to take them uh, four times a day for three weeks to see what happens. The, the skeptical people generally don't feel anything in the first few days and then they stop taking it. Mm -hmm. and then they say it didn't work. 
And I said, did you take it? And they said, no. <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, well, it's not going to work yeah. if you don't take it. Yeah. So, um, and, and it's not that they work better on women, but most of my clients are women. I'm not sure they're drawn to it. Um, so a lot of my private clients are women. Um, usually their boyfriends come after their yeah. boyfriends see how well they're doing. Then they want to come and get remedies. And, and do you put people on how many different remedies would they? Um, so I have a kind of rule of seven maximum in a bottle. Mm -hmm. um, so usually what happens is when somebody comes first, they might be in, an, in a crisis or an acute state. Um, and have a lot of different things going on and that they'll get seven. And I notice after they come for a few months and they start getting better that, um, oh, they only need four remedies this time. And then after six months, they're just their type remedy, you know, they're or maybe with one other remedy for, cause they're moving or, mm -hmm. um, have an in-law in town or something. That makes sense. So but, you take your type remedy every day or. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then eventually, you know people don't need to take the remedies if they feel good. Mm -hmm. It's not like a vitamin that if you don't take, you'll backslide mm -hmm. or lose the benefits. It's kind of like once you remove certain layers of um, distress, you don't return to that. So mm -hmm. and I have people who come, um, they just come all the time because they come every month because it's, it's like going to yoga or meditating or, you know, they're, they're out of the crisis, but they want to continue kind of putting, positive influences in, in their lives. And Tell us about your line and what inspired you to make the different ones and what you oh, have right now. Okay. Well, um, they were born out of just, I, I just was seeing people one-on-one -on -one and then um, there were a few situations that happened where I thought, oh, this is like, an epi not an epidemic, but I, I had three clients in a row who all had breakups. This was my first formula. <laughs> and um, they were totally different types of people. One, one guy was like a workaholic and very cerebral. And then there was a very, very watery kind of dreamy girl. And then um, a, an intense girl. I mean, I had these varying types of people and they all had breakups. And I was doing their formulas and writing notes. And then at the end, I looked at the formula and I went, um, wait a second, this is the formula I gave to him. And then the third person, this is the same formula. And I realized like, okay, this heartbreak situation creates a certain yeah. profile in people who are not always this, don't always need these remedies. And then the, one of the girls came back and said, Hey, do you have that heartbreak formula? I'm going to give it to my friend. She had a breakup. So I made one and I thought, well, what's the opposite of a broken heart? It's a whole heart. So I made wholehearted uh -huh. and, and, and I just wrote wholehearted on it. And, I, um, so then that became the first one. And then I had one that I used to take myself for auditions and, um, and so, and then one Christmas I thought I'd offer them as gifts. You know, I think I had two formulas or three. And, um, my boyfriend at the time had bought me a, a domain and I had this little dinky website and just for my friends and family to buy gifts. And, um, and then I just, after that, I would, I, I would think of all these formulas and they That's were based so on cool. my clients and, um, seeing what works for someone with ADD or, um, with, uh, you know, introversion or all the things that, so the, I've got. I think 23 or 24 formulas now. Total? Wow. Yes. With, and I have a kid's line too. So I've got five children's remedies. What are those for? Um, those are, we have first aid kit, which is really good for, it's like rescue remedy, um, with, but plus crab apple and walnut. So crab apple is a cleanser and walnut is, um, a, it protects you from outside influences. So, mm -hmm. you know, babies are just, they just got here. So they're very susceptible to environmental influences and it gives them a kind of shield. Yeah. So it's good for flying and teething and um, it's very calming and grounding it works very quickly. Um, goody gum drops is, um, that's sounds, one my mom yeah. is taking. It's for tantrums. <laughs> oh, that's what you gave your mom. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> she loves it, but she's doing great. And um, that's for terrible twos, but it could be for any age. So kind of acting out or, jealousy between siblings or, um, 
overly uh, demanding, you know, or um, like a capricious thing, always wanting something and never being satisfied. I think a lot of adults have that condition. Yeah. Um, magic shield is for fears and nightmares and really sensitive children. Um, what else do I have? I love Smarty all plants those. For I learning. want to take them all myself. I <laughs> want them all too. I, um, they're very universal. And so you will like relate to different formulas at different periods in your mm -hmm. life. And um, the adult ones are just, I mean, I'm trying to think of, well, the beauty formula is the one I gave you. Mm -hmm. um, beauty formula number eight. And I'm really excited. I've got a beauty formula seven, gamine for younger women, like preteen through... 30s and then the number eight is for anti-aging yeah. what's the number seven um, is it for like body image or both of them are for that so the the, the number eight was for uh, my older sister came over and one day and she said i'm thinking of getting botox and um i went no please please she has really deep lines here <laughs> and um you know we were raised by hippies and like never were given antibiotics and my yeah. mom made her herbal teas for us and so I just really didn't want her to go down that route and I said just like give me a chance with flower remedies let me do this and she said okay and I thought um what gives her those lines like these intense well she's an intense person <laughs> and she has a lot of energy and a strong will and mm -hmm. um and so that's a vervain type of person and they do hold a lot of tension in their faces or they clench their fists or so I thought um wow maybe I should try that and but then I started thinking about all her her other issues related to beauty but also all women's feelings about beauty and you know especially from being a model what I saw in yeah. my model friends who were gorgeous and hated their bodies always wanted to be somebody else and compare themselves to people in magazines and just what I feel is kind of this tragic epidemic of our time, especially for women, um, to not just be who you are and love who you are. So I, I created this remedy for her that had all these things to address, feeling good about yourself and not picking yourself apart, relaxing the face. Um, That's so beautiful. Yeah. And, and it turned into my most favorite formula. And, um, and then I realized this is a condition that's starting much younger Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was an anti-aging formula and rejuvenating for the skin. But I saw, you know, my clients would say my 11 year old daughter is um, obsessed with her imperfections or my 14 year old. Or, and I thought of myself when I was that age. And that's when it starts. Mm -hmm. I'm fat. Oh, I hate my hair. I want straight hair. I want curly hair. All of these things, you know. Yeah. So the seven, num the gamine number seven is for those girls and it's just filled with confidence remedies and, uh, identity, knowing who you are and feeling beautiful. And, um, and also it has walnut, which protects you from kind of peer pressure and outside influence. So I love that. Yeah. I wish everyone could have that. Me too. That's my dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does it go? So we've been talking a lot. I've been interviewing a few people the last couple of days and reading a lot about um, like what you're saying, a lot of disease starts with, it starts because of your emotions. Yeah. And you mentioned that earlier. And so do they go into your subconscious and help with I subconscious so. thought patterns? I think so. Um, that's what I, I mean, I've always had the best results I mean, in terms of emotional, like therapies, mm -hmm. I did t went to talk therapists for years because I had a lot of grief and a difficult childhood. And so I went to these talk therapists and I just didn't find relief. I mean, it was good to talk, but sometimes made things worse or it gave me a very um, overly intellectual. I like I, ha I had a very good understanding of why I didn't feel good. Yeah. But I still felt bad. Yeah. But I could tell anybody why. Uh, and like what happened to me and um but when I took the flower remedies it felt like um Your it body. happened on a subconscious level mm -hmm. you know that we our bodies are these super computers that just remember everything on a cellular level and that's what protects us from you know to not burn yourself on a fire because when you're little you learn not don't touch fire yeah. um but they they I think they break up patterns and learned behavior and also negative thought processes. And these are all things that um, 
I find you you can't really will them away. You know, you can you can do practices that increase your or you know, increase your positivity, but it's hard to will certain things away mm-hmm. with your conscious mind. Um so I think the flower remedies work on that level, on a vibrational or subconscious or Yeah. It's it makes so much sense when you say that. Like it really helps with your body versus the we're such intelligent humans. Yeah. And we want to justify and we want to like analyze everything, but to feel it. Exactly. It's so powerful. And yeah. Do you, uh, do yoga? What other things do I you do, do to, um, complement the flower remedies? I do yoga and, um, I love, I love more gentle yoga. Mm-hmm. I'm not like an Ashtanga person. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I have a kind of, um, I'm a nervous system ruled person, so I need a lot of calming. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do more like um, yin yoga and just gentle hatha, and I take ballet and oh, uh, that's fun. And I walk and you know. Um, How often do you do ballet? Uh, just a few times a week. I used to do it more. I had this great Russian. Um, I'm looking for another Russian. If anybody. <laughs> um, this great Russian man teacher and um, I took like four to five times a week and I was in the best shape of my life. Wow. And, and then um, he retired or I heard he became a policeman. <laughs> He's a young guy. Um, That's so random, yeah. but I guess you <laughs> it can makes have sense. a different passion. Yeah. It totally makes sense. And I think of his kind of disciplinarian thing. And um, so now I, I take two times a week and with this lovely French woman, Katy. And, um, on the East side. Yeah. She is teaches it a studio that you go to or, um, I get, she teaches at two places. One is, um, heartbeat house in Atwater. And that's just a really simple class. Um, it's an hour. And then at, um, she teaches at Echo Park Pilates and Arts, which is this really sweet little studio up in the hills in the residential neighborhood. I'll have to go try yeah. it. It's right next to Yogala, which is where I take yoga. And mm-hmm. They've that they sell my stuff in the little boutique there. And um yeah, you would love Yogala. It's a really great neighborhood yoga place. And where else are your uh, remedies sold? Um your do actually, you have remedies or essence uh, remedies same? is good. Yeah. yeah. Um, they're actually at Strange Invisible Perfumes up the street where oh, I'm going to yeah. go after to buy her. some perfume. Yeah, I love that place. Yeah, the um, owner's so sweet. Yeah, that was the first place that ever carried my stuff. And, How um, did you get connected with them? Okay, so um, I, I became very sensitive to um, scents, sensitive to scents and synthetic perfumes. And I wanted a perfume and I had heard that they had um, botanical only perfumes. So I went to the boutique and I was just blown away by how beautiful it was. It was just so refined and Parisian and kind of, I, I ha- there's just very little of that in LA. Mm-hmm. And um, I kind of thought, oh, I'd love to have my stuff in here one day. And um, and then someone for my birthday bought me a, 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 a some perfume from there. And then they got the wrong one and I wanted to exchange it. And somehow I built a relationship with the shop girl, Amanda. And, and then she became my client and then she told them, you've got to check this wow. stuff out. And so it was a kind of serendipitous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And where else? So they're all over the West coast or just Los Angeles? Yeah, or? LA and um, New York and a few in like Kansas city and in England. Um, so in LA, they're at um, where are they at? Individual medley in Atwater, Yogala, the yoga studio. I'm gonna forget places. Well, that's okay. But yeah. So they anthropology. Uh, that's the big deal. Big, just yeah. Started. So do you find that a lot more people are tapping into it? Yes, I, they're so open to it. Um, more so even in the last three years, it seems like when I first started, it was I had to do a lot of like pre-explaining. Um, and now people that I'm surprised how many people already know about flower remedies or just the, the concept of, of vibration or vibrational medicine. So, so is it similar to homeopathy? The way yeah, it works? It, very similar. Um, the difference is that with homeopathy, I, and I'm a homeopath as well. Oh, um, wow. you have to have the right remedy or if it doesn't work, or you can even cause 
adverse, um, you know, you can get aggravations if you take the wrong one. And um, it's hard to find your own homeopathic remedy. There are hundreds of remedies and it's hard to be objective about yourself unless you have an acute, like a stomach mm -hmm. flu or something. Um, and homeopathy uses substances that in larger doses would hurt you. So poison, wow. some snake venom, some po arsenic, you know, some pretty yeah. intense things. Flower remedies um, don't do that. They don't like stimulate you. They just give you the positive. And if you take the wrong one, nothing happens. And So it's like restorative yoga. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they're very gentle and, um, and they're easy to prescribe for yourself because they're kind of very simple to understand. And... Uh, but they are similar in that they're very dilute and vibrational and they work on that kind of subtle energetic mm -hmm. field like acupuncture. And um, So are some, it does practicing yoga and doing other things help open you up to receive more or it helps uh, anyone? I think so. I mean, I don't think you have to be a yogi or a hippie or, you know, um, to to feel them. I mean, I have clients who are really like, work-minded and impatient and like they just have a lot of tension and maybe adrenal exhaustion or that they, they're they don't want to delve de too deeply into like um the spiritual side of things and and they feel great on the remedies so you know i i do find people who are very sensitive they respond more quickly to the remedies it's not mm -hmm. that they have more effect but some people they'll take it and immediately feel it you know um so that's the only place I've noticed a difference is people who do yoga and are more kind of in touch with themselves feel faster. Yeah. Can you drink caffeine while you take flower essences? Yes. Yeah. Um, nothing interferes with them. They don't interfere with anything like medication or Chinese herbs or any other modalities. So they're great. Um, and if you don't, are, are bad at remembering to take them you can put them in your daily water bottle and shake it up and just drink it throughout the day mm -hmm. oh yeah so you do all four doses in one um you if you were to put it in yeah one. you would add 16 drops to your bottle shake it up and then throughout the day you might every few sips you might hold it under your tongue because mm -hmm. that's um when you take the drops you hold them under your tongue to kind of absorb um so, yeah, you can do that. And drops are different than dropper folds, yes. right? Okay. Yeah, I have had I to explain that because yeah. someone came back like, I've already run out of my bottle and it is, you know, days. And, and they, I said, four drops. <laughs> oh, and they were doing four dropper folds. Um, so, yeah, one bottle of my formulas um, lasts a month if you do it as directed. Mm -hmm. You can take them more often too. Like, I mean, I... I take mine much more than four times a day, yeah. um, but you can't overdose on them. So if you want to increase the potency, you would take more frequent doses rather than more at once. Mm -hmm. So I had someone who was really heartbroken and they said they drank the whole bottle of wholehearted. <laughs> and I was like, well, you screwed yourself because that's one dose. Um, you know, so it's not like they're more, more yeah. effective to take more at once. That's so funny. Yeah. What are some of the, other um illnesses that you've helped treat with flower or that flower essences can help treat like can there be Physical? things like yeah like thyroid or other um issues yes i mean the ones i see a lot of are, are headaches migraines um so many headaches are caused by muscle tension and um that can that's from a kind of bracing and so that can be from fear or past trauma you know if someone has a lot of fear in their body they can brace um or if they've had you know if they'd have an accident before and they're kind of walking around in an armored state mm -hmm. they're tense all the time or it can be for somebody like my sister is saying the vervain lines um uh vervain people hold a lot of tension in their bodies and they tend to get issues related to that um so i've treated headaches and um, menstrual irregularity pregnancy related um postpartum and and uh, balancing hormones so you get regular mm. periods and less pms mm -hmm. um digestive issues um, i found digestion is very uh connected to fear and anxiety yeah you know and you get like butterflies or digestive trouble um 
and irritability. Sometimes they're irritable people can get a lot of like acid and churning and things like that. Um, thyroid is a complicated thing. I'm actually dealing with my own thyroid stuff, so I'm learning a lot about it. Um, it's a very interesting thing because it's rarely just the thyroid. It's usually caused by other things. And, mm -hmm. and in homeopathy too, um, studying thyroid, um, I see a connection with grief and thyroid. Mm -hmm. um, so far, that's what I've made a connection between those things. Um, I was diagnosed with hypothyroid, oh. uh, but that was actually around the time my grandfather passed away. That is crazy. You see? It's yeah. just um, when you have, you know, grief can suppress certain functions and um, that's what I've known. And grief can affect the nervous system too. And suppressed grief is very, I think, um, damaging to the body. Uh, suppression of any kind, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's the big thing in homeopathy is, you know, you don't want to suppress a skin eruption. Like you don't, uh, acne or a rash, because um, it'll drive the illness deeper into your body and then you get asthma. How would you suppress it? Like with asthma? You mean? No, like suppress a skin um, eruption. Oh, with a cortisone oh. and antibiotics are like the two big evils in homeopathy because it's like buy now, pay later. You know, you go, oh, my skin's great. The rash is gone. And then often we see like a few months later, somebody has allergies and they, yeah. they don't link them to this cortisone. Mm -hmm. Then they then they suppress the allergies with a cortisone inhaler. And then they're, they say, my asthma's gone, but I'm really um, anxious. Then they take an anti-anxiety medication. Then that suppresses things. Then they get depression. And it's just, it's the same illness that was on the skin. It's the same disorder, yeah. but pushed deeper and deeper into the body and it's trying to say something yeah and it's trying to get out we mm -hmm. want things being pushed out um like this a skin disease is we think the best thing to have mm -hmm. even though it doesn't look great it's it's the healthiest thing to have as a skin problem because mm -hmm. it's the most outer part of you mm -hmm. um so but also uh we don't want to suppress emotions so you know and it's not appropriate to express rage yeah. So a lot of physical stuff can cause come from suppressed anger. So the flower remedies are really good with that because they don't suppress the anger. It's like they they give you what you need to heal that anger and and it's like a slow diffusion rather than a suppression of mm -hmm. the, of that volatile energy. And pain, do they help with like back pain? Yes. And yeah. Um uh, back pain isn't that suppressed anger? That's what in I've my heard. experience. Yes, um, and uh, I'm really big into um, that. The work of John Sarno, Doctor Sarno, who wrote. Uh, he had a very simple book called like "The Cure for All Back Pain," or it was some very short mm -hmm. book. But he's written a lot um, more since then, more complicated books about the link between not just back pain but allergies. Um, and other illnesses that are, he said, re directly related to suppressed rage and anger. So, um, yeah. It's incredible what our bodies can tell us yeah. if we just listen. Yeah. Sometimes it's just the acknowledging of something that, you know, I'll have a client come and, and they may not know that they have suppressed anger. And I'll, I'll go through their story and I'll tell them the remedy and why and that it's for suppressed anger. And they'll They'll, as they recognize that they have it, it's like that's a healing in itself. And mm -hmm. later they'll say, even before I took the remedy, I felt better just knowing that I could be facing that thing and like letting it go in some way, you know. Do most people you see have it? Have suppressed anger? <laughs> like, do you think everyone has a no. level of? No. 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 But everyone thinks that everyone has the same issue they have. Like yeah. I'll say... Uh, do you have rage? And they'll go, yeah, who doesn't? You know, like, do you, whenever you ask, do you have, so, do you have shyness? Yeah, who doesn't? Um, well, a lot of people don't have what you have. <laughs> but we tend to just think that everyone has what we have. So, no, I see, um, I see suppressed anger in very sweet people. You know, that's a thing. Like, people who want to please, that could be a side effect. Like, it's not in their true nature to be angry. And that's why anger is so hard for them because it's like toxic to them yeah. and it's in the shadow and they don't want to, and they're the nice people. And you know, the people who are kind of overtly angry are, 
they're fine. They don't have the suppressed <laughs> anger issues. Yeah. They've got other stuff, you know. What would you uh, give Donald Trump? <laughs> what flower essences O-M-G. would you give Donald Trump? <laughs> this is like a long... <laughs> I mean, I think about this all the time. I I watch movies. Really? And, like, oh, I can't anyone? stop. I can't stop. Like, I just saw The Phantom Thread the other day. Um, have What's you seen that? it with Daniel Day-Lewis? Oh, I haven't. It's a really beautiful movie. I mean, beautiful looking and disturbing and very interesting. And, of course, um, through the whole movie, I was whispering to my mom, because like, the <laughs> Daniel Day-Lewis character is really out there and weird. And I go... He's an arsenicum, you know, and telling her what homeopathic remedies he is. And um, so I'm doing it all the time. Uh, Trump, I don't know. I mean, most leaders, most leaders need vine. And vine is actually in, in the kids' remedies, uh, goody gumdrops, too. Cause is it? It's for, like, dictators. Yeah. So that's something that we have when we're two. Or as you start learning that you have a will and you want things. Yeah. Like, you know, demanding stuff. That's. Um, it's a quality leaders have and they're, they're and your dog, um, bossy, mm-hmm. bossy, my way or the highway, like to, you know, and dictators. Um, <laughs> and it's a great quality to have when it's balanced because we need those leaders. Yeah. They're good in emergencies. They're the person that's always cool in an emergency mm-hmm. and, um, they can run companies and countries and, but, um, you know, when it gets corrupted, it's not good. So maybe vine maybe heather we'll that's have for to like, send him some oh yeah can you imagine that would be so crazy i mean who knows if he'd take it but you might as well yeah <laughs> there'd be others too believe me there'd be seven things in that bottle yeah <laughs> lot yeah your max number yeah, yeah. But, um yeah just um anyway i feel like i'm just rambling on i here. love it i love learning about it because i think I mean, I've been in this industry for yeah. a while, but I still am so unfamiliar with flower essences. And even though I used it and it really helped me yeah. um, a few years ago, I don't, it's not something that I have in my health regimen. Yeah. Or, and I think that it's so great because it's something that, like you said, works on a subtle level. It's not something that you have to go talk it out or do some crazy thing it just really helps you because plants have the information that we need exactly I'm I'm surprised especially in LA that um more people don't know about flower remedies and Mm -hmm. they're big in Europe and in England but um here just I mean especially LA especially Venice where I mean everyone knows but there's you know I'll have clients that are like I do rolfing I do kundalini yoga I do I mean just I could list all the kind of far out things they do but they've never heard of of this um so i mean i feel like if people took flower essences they could just throw away a huge cabinet of vitamins and supplements Mm -hmm. they're taking to try to find balance you know Mm -hmm. and you do workshops as well no but we were just wanting to do one together I, i feel like i should do workshops soon because um now i've been doing this so long i have so much to share yeah and people keep asking me I just have to find the time to do it figure out, and figure out how how to do it I, th- I feel like it takes a, a while you know um I did a few like afternoon things but they it wasn't long enough to teach what you need to know yeah this. so what would you do would you like have them create their own or you would be teaching them more of the information about. Yeah. I, I would. Yeah. We did everything. I did the, the history of flower remedies and then, you know, I kind of covered some of the remedies and what they do and then um, had people create their own flower essence That's so bottle. Cool. Um, but I feel like I'd rather do a three day thing or um, because, you know, someone else someone can learn the 38 remedies at home they can buy a book study them and get to know them and like for me to go through each one yeah um would be nuts but um so yeah I've got to figure out how to do it it'd be so fun I'd love to take it okay anytime you're inspiring me I'm gonna I'm gonna work on this yeah well, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. And it's maybe you'll make Donald Trump that remedy oh and God. save the world. And we'll call it just Trump. <laughs>